Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to get started learning about what the difference is in independent versus dependent data. Now, for the most part, these definitions reach out into the regular normal world and not just in statistics. And so I think that you will find it fairly intuitive, but let's talk about the nuances of it. So when we talk about independent data, it tends to be that you have the same measurement on two separate groups. Essentially, they're independent of one another. So one group does not impact the other group. Now that can happen for a variety of reasons. You could have had an observational study where you ask people, are they young or old? Old, young. Do they drink caffeine? How much caffeine does their age seem to affect how much caffeine they need. If you're younger, do you need less caffeine? If you're older, do you need more caffeine? That would be independent data. So I would have two groups, old and young, and I would be comparing caffeine use for the two groups. And I would not expect that the old group's caffeine use would affect the young group's caffeine use. That's one example. Another example. Maybe I assigned, so in the last one it was observational, right? I asked them if they were old or young, and then I asked them about how much caffeine. These french fries look so tasty, don't they? Now maybe I assign people two different types of fast food. I could do french fries, or maybe I could do burgers. Sorry, I have to, it's so funny to me. Now, what I could be testing is the number of calories that people eat if I gave them an unlimited amount of fries versus burgers. That still would be independent, even though I'm assigning people to groups, because I would not, I would not expect that the people who were given french fries, the number of calories that they eat would affect the people who were given burgers. I could do another way. Maybe I'm testing the effectiveness of COVID vaccines. Well, People make their own choice on which COVID vaccine to use. Maybe they do Pfizer, maybe they do uh, Johnson & Johnson. And if that's the case, I could see how effective that is at preventing um, COVID. Now, again, I wouldn't expect the one group's uh, getting COVID to impact another group. So we would call that independent. So it's the same measurement taken on two independent groups and it can be collected either through an observational study or a randomized experiment. Then we have dependent data. This one is a little more nuanced because it can happen in a variety of ways. So sometimes you could just have a pair of measurements. Get it? It's a pair of pairs. <laughs> So you could have a pair of measurements on one person. So it could be two things that really cannot be statistically separated, like they're dependent on each other. Or you could have something called repeated measurements where you've got the same individual and you take the same measurement, but you take it over time. So again, it would be dependent. So a pair of measurements would be dependent as well as repeated measurements would be dependent because one measurement is in fact impacted by the other. So maybe we are seeing how good a new workout routine would be. So we could measure muscle mass at the beginning of the workout routine or before it started, and then after a couple of months of doing the workout routine to see if muscle mass increased. So that would be repeated measurements because we're taking the same measurement on the same individual, but we're doing it over multiple times. We could have how people choose to use their time. Maybe the amount of time they're on a computer versus the amount of time they watch TV. Now that would be a pair of measurements and I would not expect that this would be independent data because the amount of time that I'm on my computer would depend on the amount of time I'm watching TV or vice versa. Those two things are definitely related because I only have a certain amount of time in my day and so I would expect one measurement to impact or depend on the other measurement. Now, the other thing you could have is maybe how much money you're capable of saving. And we would think that this maybe could be a repeated measurement. Like you start, this is how much money you've been saving. You take a financial education class, and then at the end of that, you measure how much you're able to save. And that would be dependent because the amount that I'm able to save would depend on the type of saver I started out to be. 
And then over the course of learning that information, maybe I improved my saving methods. So that's the idea. And the independent data, you want to say to yourself that one group is independent of the other. It does not impact the other group. Dependent data can happen for a variety of reasons. You could have repeated measurements or you could just have straight paired data. And it doesn't always have to be on the same individual, but it tends to be the case that that's how data is collected. So always when you're thinking about this, you want to ask yourself, would one measurement impact the other measurement? If the answer is no, then you would have independent data. If the answer is yes, then it's going to be dependent data. But don't get down that rabbit trail of trying to talk yourself into it being dependent. Um, sometimes students go like far into how this could be dependent and um, that's not gonna help you. Don't do that, don't, don't do that. So we will talk about this more when I start to do the examples. As for now, we've learned it, take it, use it. See you in future videos.